Now, broadly, we can classify the causes as one, inadequate intake. Then second, the requirement is increased and it is not being fulfilled. Third, malabsorption at various points, at various sites. Then fourth is the drug interaction, which are impairing the absorption of the vitamins. Next slide. Now, what is the Indian scenario? What are the common vitamin deficiencies if we consider the Indian scenario? Next slide. The various studies that have carried out, they, they show that vitamin deficiencies are quite common in our population. But if we look at the type of the deficiency, usually more common is folate and vitamin B12 deficiency and vitamin D deficiency. These three uh, vitamins are quite very commonly seen, deficiencies are commonly seen in the Indian population. And these deficiencies, the incident tend to increase with age. The reasons we have already discussed, three can be atrophic gastritis or malabsorption. The incidence, these uh, things, the increase increases with age, so hence the chances of deficiency also increases with age. Next slide. Now, once there is deficiency, what will happen? How will it manifest? Various vitamins, they will lead to various kinds of diseases because each of them has a different role to perform. B1 usually causes beriberi or related to dementia or Alzheimer's disease. B2 can lead to glossitis, keloitis, neurodegenerative diseases or peripheral neuropathy. B3 can cause pellagra or dermatitis. B5 causes alopecia or degenerative changes in the central nervous system. While B6 is associated with microcytic anemia or homocysteine urea. B7 deficiency can lead to graying of hair or other CNS disorders. While B9 is associated with leukopenia macrocytic anemia and other neurological disorders. Deficiency of B12 vitamin causes also causes macrocytic anemia. We will discuss some of them in detail, One, the mainly the ones which we encounter in our clinical practice. Next slide. Okay, just a word about vitamin B3 that is niacin. Niacin is an essential vitamin. It is an essential nutrient which is involved in the synthesis and metabolism of carbohydrates, fats and proteins. What happens is the deficiency, it causes pellagra. You all know we used to commonly remember it as 3Ds or 4Ds, which includes pigmented dermatitis, diarrhea, dementia and ultimately leading to death. It is very easy to maintain an adequate niacin in our body. Why? Because if we take a high protein diet, then the tryptophan in the diet can be converted to niacin in the liver and hence it will prevent the deficiency. Another thing important clinically in niacin is we were using it to lower the triglyceride levels. It has a good impact on reducing the triglyceride levels. Only issue was that it was required at a very high doses and sometimes there was difficulty in tolerating this uh, niacin as a part of a drug. So the use was slightly lowered down. Next slide. Other vitamin is vitamin B6 or pyridoxin. As we have already discussed, it causes metabolism of amino acids. It helps in the formation of red blood cells, conversion of carbohydrates into energy, and formation of various chemical transmitters. Next slide. Now, B6 deficiency can occur due to several reasons. It can be malabsorption like Crohn's disease, celiac disease or ulcerative colitis. Sometimes drugs like anti-seizure or anti-tubercular like isoniazid can also cause B6 deficient deficiency. And even it can be associated with alcoholism or hyperthyroidism. Next slide. Now, what happens with anti-tubercular drugs? This INH, it, uh, the metabolites directly attach to or inactivate the pyridoxine species. Other way is they can inhibit the enzyme pyridoxine phosphokinase. This enzyme is necessary for the activation of pyridoxine to pyridoxyl 5-phosphate. As a result, it will lead to pyridoxine deficiency. And that is why if you remember, we are usually supplementing the RTB patients with everyday dose of pyridoxine in the dose of 30 to 50 milligrams. When the pyridoxine deficiency occurs, it presents as 
non specific stomatitis, glossitis, chelitis, and sometimes even symptoms of peripheral neuropathy. Next slide. <laughs> Another important vitamin these days is biotin. Biotin is an essential vitamin which is very, uh, I mean, very much studied for the production of keratin, especially for nails, skin, and hair. And it is seen that. It has been various studies have shown that lack of biotin can lead to hair loss and even dry scaly skin and cracking on the corners of the mouth with glossitis and chelitis. So of any patient presenting with these symptoms of hair loss and dry scaly skin, we are giving biotin as a supplement. Next slide. Now this biotin, it can be found in a variety of plant as well as animal products like liver, egg yolk, soya bean product, and yeast. And what it does is it is basically a coenzyme which is involved in various reactions, carboxylation, transcarboxylation, and decarboxylation reactions. Next slide. Now, some studies are carried out which show that this supplement, it also has a role in reducing triglyceride and VLDL in hypertriglyceridemia patients. Many studies are carried out which show that in the effect of biotin as a supplement on lipid profile. So they say that the triglyceride lowering effect of biotin, it suggests that biotin could be used in the treatment of hypertriglyceridemia. Next slide. Then there's another common vitamin deficiency that we, that we encounter in our practice is B1, that is thiamine. Now thiamine, this is a cofactor again for several key enzymes involved in energy metabolism. It is primarily found in foods like yeast, legumes, pork, brown rice, and cereals made from whole grains, but it becomes deficient in polished rice. Why? Because with all this processing, the thiamine gets removed. Also, it gets denatured at high pH and high temperature. So cooking, baking, and canning of all foods can also destroy thiamine, leading to its deficiency. Next slide. The thiamine deficiency, it can present as two types. One is beriberi, other is wernicke korsakoff syndrome. Now, beriberi further can be dry beriberi or wet beriberi. Dry is the development of symmetrical peripheral neuropathy, characterized by sensory and motor impairment, mainly of the distal extremity, while wet periberi, in addition to neuropathy, also have signs of cardiac involvement in the form of cardiomyopathy or heart failure. Next slide. Wernicke's encephalopathy, Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome is basically a syndrome complex that includes Wernicke's encephalopathy and Korsakoff syndrome. It is Wernicke's encephalopathy is an acute syndrome which requires urgent treatment, while Korsakoff syndrome is a chronic neurological condition that usually occurs as a consequence of Wernicke's encephalopathy. Next slide. <clears throat> there are various conditions which are associated with Wernicke's encephalopathy. It can be chronic alcoholism, anorexia nervosa, hyperemesis of pregnancy, prolonged intravenous feeding, prolonged fasting or starvation some gastrointestinal diseases or surgeries, or even hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis or acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. All these conditions leads to deficiency of thiamine and hence presentation as Wernicke's and Kepler. Next slide. The classical trial for Wernicke's encephalopathy that is very important is encephalopathy, oculomotor dysfunction, and gait ataxia. 